If you somehow haven't heard by now, the first presidential debate of 2024 was a complete catastrophe for President Biden. Um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right, he did beat Medicare. He beat it to death and he's destroying Medicare. This has led his usual pack of supporters, from Hollywood A-listers to the media and nearly 70% of all Americans, to call for our commander-in-chief to pass the torch of Democratic nomination to a more suitable candidate. Most Americans do not believe this president can serve effectively for the next four months to Election Day, let alone the next four and a half years. It just seems like every day is going to be like this with people saying he should drop out, people that are Democratic Party stalwarts. The Democrats are in absolute full panic mode. It's all been downhill for Biden since the first presidential debate of the 2024 election. A majority of Americans, both Democrat and Republican, are calling on Biden to step down. And he's also lost major A-list celebrities like Stephen King and George Clooney. And as the expression goes in D.C., so goes George Clooney, so goes the nation. Among his own party, Representative Adam Smith and Senator Peter Welch have also called on Biden to leave the race, yet Biden still won't back down. Hard to sugarcoat it. Um, no one can be happy with President Biden's performance. And anyone who is saying that he did a good job is, is friggin' del delusional. Democrats were all in for Joe Biden until that debate. So we start with this, a Fox News alert, seven House Democrats are calling on President Biden to end his re-election bid, and now Michael Bennett has become the first Democrat from the Senate to publicly echo that sentiment. Donald Trump is on track, I think, to win this election uh, and maybe win it by a landslide and take with him the Senate and the House. And so for me, this isn't a question about polling. It's not a question about politics. This after House Democrats met behind closed doors yesterday discussing Biden's re-election bid and it seems they're still divided. Are you all on the same page? No. What do you mean you're not on the same page? They're not even in the same book. We're riding with Biden. Was there a conversation Everyone? about Vice President Kamala? We are Kamala. riding with Biden. Was there, vice, was there a conversation about Vice President Kamala Harris in there? We are riding with Biden. This is Axios reporting that just hours before yesterday's meeting with the House, a smaller group of swing district Democrats held what sources described as a despondent gathering with, quote, actual tears. <laughs> well, the, meanwhile, this, uh, the New York Times calling out Democrats saying uh, they panic about President Biden, but, but, no, but not, to doing, not doing so would uh, nudge him aside. So they have two, two straight editorials telling him to step aside. They say, uh, one report says, one-third of the Democratic caucus wants him gone. One-third wants him to stay. And one-third are resigned that he is the nominee but thinks he is going to lose. Right. So this happened behind closed doors. I have news for you. He's not leaving. Nope. Uh, and, so yeah, Keem Jeffrey says, I'm firmly in the corner. That's a big news. Mm -hmm. The Con Congressional Black Caucus says, I'm firmly in the corner. That's big news. Now Jerry Nadler. Chuck Schumer. He's flipped back. Flips back. <laughs> AOC. <you> ah. <laughs> the Congressional Black Caucus. Here's the thing. A according to the New York Times, uh, behind the scenes... Democrats, a lot of Democrats, and Brian uh, beautifully breaking it down, um, a lot of Democrats want Joe Biden to really blow it this week. Nancy Pelosi was just on another show, and she was asked whether or not he should drop out, and her, her answer should not necessarily make him feel good, him being Joe Biden. Watch. It's up to the president to decide if he is going to run. Uh, we're all encouraging him uh, to, to make that decision uh, because time is running short. You want him to run? I want him to do whatever he decides to do. And that's, that's the way it is. Whatever he decides, we go with. Let's, let's just hold off. Whatever you're thinking, either tell somebody privately, but you don't have to put that out on the table until we see how we go this week. Biden has 99% of the Democratic delegates. Now you need 1,976 delegates required to win the Democratic nomination. Biden has 3,894. So that's realistically why Democrats can't replace Biden unless he voluntarily withdraws himself. This is gonna be solely up to President Biden because he owns the delegates and he will decide whether he will or won't, will not step down. Now, if he drops out, it could lead to one of two outcomes. Biden could endorse someone else and tell his delegates to support that person, 
or Biden could tell the party pick whoever they think is best. So who are some of the potential options to take Biden's place? Now, as for his possible replacement, there are several names that have been floated around a lot, including California Governor Gavin Newsom. Even though Republicans can easily slam him over the high taxes, chronic crime, and homelessness in this state, this Democratic governor does not shy away from the cameras or making national headlines. Some political analysts believe he's been running a shadow campaign. He has been making presidential moves for months now, visiting Israel shortly after Hamas's October 7th attack and making a trip to China to discuss climate initiatives. He ran abortion rights ads in Republican-controlled states, and he went head-to-head -head with former GOP presidential contender Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in a debate moderated by Sean Hannity right here on Fox last year. Newsom was at the presidential debate on Thursday. After Biden's rough performance, he was asked about replacing the president here is his response. Governor, if you're asked, would you be willing to take that ticket? Everyone's Senator, told Senator, 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 Another Democrat whose name keeps getting floated for a presidential contender is Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. She leads a swing state that is critical for Democrats to win. The second term governor also helped flip both chambers of the state legislature blue with her fight for abortion rights, a key issue among Democrats this election season. And we cannot go without mentioning former First Lady Michelle Obama and Vice President Kamala Harris. Both women are very popular among Democrats. The Washington Post, including them in a list of potential Biden replacements, in addition to Democrat Josh Shapiro, who won a solid victory for governorship in 2022 in Pennsylvania, a purple state which is critical for the Democrats' hopes of winning the White House this November. Who would you pick if you had to choose somebody? Well, again, you have to go through the history here. These delegates were nominated for this ticket Harris, I think, would be the likely nominee if for some reason, any reason, Joe Biden had to remove himself. You could bet on that as almost a certainty. You think it would be Kamala Harris? Yes, absolutely. Biden's top campaign officials will meet with Senate Democrats this afternoon, perhaps trying to persuade them that he's going to stay in. Senator Ted Cruz, Republican from the great state of Texas, joins us now. Mr. Senator, is Biden going to bow out gracefully? Or is he going to be forced out? Stuart, I think he's going to be forced out. I, I put the odds of Biden not being on the ballot in November at about 80 percent. I think the Democratic Party is freaking out right now. I think you're seeing senators, you're seeing House members, you're seeing the New York Times, you're seeing NBC News, you're seeing George Clooney in Hollywood. And, and, and it's worth noting why they're freaking out. Listen, they've all known for six months, for a year, for longer, that Biden's mental capacity was severely diminished, that he was not up to doing the job. But they're not worried about having a commander in chief who's not capable of fulfilling the responsibilities. The only reason they're panicking is because they now realize the American people have seen that and they're terrified that he's going to lose in November. And so now they're willing to dump him. I put the odds. At, at about 80 percent, they dump him. And if and when they dump him, I think their replacement nominee will be one of two people. It will either be Michelle Obama or it will be Kamala Harris. And I actually predicted 10 months ago on my podcast, Verdict with Ted Cruz, 10 months ago, I predicted they were going to push Joe Biden out and replace him with, with Michelle Obama. That may still prove to be the case. You see my eyes widen when you said that, Michelle Obama. I was <laughs> a little surprised hey, there. No, it's not going to be Michelle Obama. Kamala Harris's name has been tossed around for months, and as vice president, she is the obvious backup for many. New CNN polling is giving Kamala a lifeline. She's the only candidate who comes within striking distance of Trump. Two points. The Biden-Harris money belongs to Kamala Harris. That money cannot be transferred. And we're talking about a lot of money. Joining me now, former Democratic presidential candidate and VP contender Tulsi Gabbard. Are you afraid of Kamala, because Trump's already turning his target toward him. I think our country should be very, very afraid of a president and commander in chief, Kamala Harris. You, you'll see why President Trump is now focusing on Kamala Harris is because he sees what the rest of us see is that whether it's Joe Biden at the top of the ticket 
or if they bump up Kamala Harris to be on the top of the ticket, either scenario will result, if they win, in a president Kamala Harris. Another issue is campaign funding. Historically, President Biden has been an expert campaigner and has raised tens of millions of dollars on his behalf. So it's unclear that that money could go to a different candidate like Gretchen Whitmer or Gavin Newsom if they ultimately ended up on the top of the ticket. I've also heard theories that like the money in the Biden camp, Harris campaign account could be sent to a third committee that can then get it to a, a Newsom or a Whitmer, but it's all very unclear because we're in very uncharted territory, obviously. What do I think? I, I think Biden is gonna be the nominee. I think barring any major events that occur, you know, acts of God, I believe Biden said only Lord Almighty will get me out of this race. So unless Lord Almighty intervenes, he's going to be the Democratic nominee. And I'll remind you all, there was a primary and 14 million Americans voted for President Biden to be the Democratic nominee. I don't know that you get uh, Obama and Abigail Disney and George Clooney in a room to swap out Biden for someone else, and that'll fly with the majority of voters who pick Biden to be their standard bearer. So I think pretty much at this point, he's strapped to the rocket. Who do you think should replace Biden? Let us know in the comments.